A warm welcome and very good evening to all dear participants, resource person of today's session, uh, respected Dr. Ashish Kumar Yadav sir, and chairperson of today's session, our respected Dr. Supriya Bhale Rao ma'am. Today, we are having our uh, last session on inferential statics, chapter uh, 5, testing of difference, non-parametric test. Now, I would uh, like to introduce uh, today's resource person of the session. Yesterday, he delivered uh, one session on um, inferential statics, uh, and uh, we all uh, know him very well, but uh, two people are recently joined. For that, uh, uh, we take only one minute of time. Uh, sir is currently working as an assistant professor in Center of Biostatics Faculty of Medicine, Institute of Medical Sciences, Banaras Hindu University, Varanasi. And uh, research interest, sir, is uh, interested in multi-level modeling, regression analysis, meta-analysis, Bayesian statics, epidemiological study design, and survival analysis, reliability analysis. Sir has done PhD in medical statics from National Institute of Medical Statics, ICMR, New Delhi. MFC in Health Statics Institute of Medical Sciences, Banaras Hindu University. Professional Diploma in Clinical Research, Catalyst Clinical Services. As a professional uh, experience as SI Postgraduate Institution of Medical Sciences, Kolkata, 2019-2020 as Associate Professor in Jawaharlal Nehru Medical College, uh, Rajasthan. Uh, from 2010 to 2014 as an assistant professor and at uh, National Institute of Medical Statics, ICMR New Delhi, as a research assistant in IDSP project funded by WHO. Sir has received many awards. Uh, some of them are uh, like uh, qualified uh, net as with junior research fellowship in 2010 in population studies from University Grant Commission, India to pursue PhD. Received grant to conduct high-end workshops under Abhyas scheme uh, SERB initiative Karasthala. Uh, sir has uh, a skill on the Windows, Linux, and Apple iOS. And uh, in the statical software, we can say that in R, uh, Stata, OpenBox, Python, SPSS, and W, etc. Uh, sir has uh, more than 14 years of uh, teaching experience as an assistant professor, associate professor, and uh, more than 35 research publications in the international journal published by sir. Now, uh, I would like to request her to kindly lead today's session. Our uh, respected chairperson will join us soon. He's trying to uh, resolve some technical issue. Uh, so I request to our respected sir, so please kindly lead today's session. Welcome, sir. Sir, you are uh, mute, sir. Am I audible now? Yes, yes, sir. perfect, sir, perfect. Okay. Welcome, sir. Okay, thank you, thank you, Amit. And uh, I once again I welcome you all. And uh, today we would be having another session on um, your testing of hypothesis, where we would be having more focus on your non-parametric tests. Okay, so Amit, uh, sh should we start the presentation? Yes, please, sir. Please, sir. Okay. <clears throat> Give me a second. Okay. Is the screen visible to all? Yes, sir. Visible now, sir. I think I should increase my voice. Okay. I hope now I am uh, audible, clear cut. Yes, perfect, sir. Perfect, sir. Okay. So today we will be dealing with non parametric test testing of hypothesis. I hope the parametric part of testing of hypothesis is done. Okay. So we will be dealing with the non-parametric part. However, I briefly, I will tell you what's going on because it is the basic thing which require, which is needed in this non-parametric one also. Okay. So non-parametric test, what basically they are. So, if you go with the non parametric test, generally these tests are the simple tests which do not make any assumptions. So, uh, as we were having certain assumptions in the T distribution in your uh, Z, okay, 
and in your different forms of T. Okay, there are there are certain distributions and in F distributions there are certain distrib uh, distributions are there there are certain assumptions. Okay, so if your data set is such that it fails to have a parametric form, okay, then we can move in a non param we can use a non parametric test by seeing that it fails to have a parametric forms what i mean is that you are having a data set and you are uh, trying to have find out whether it is having a normal distribution or not but unfortunately you find that your data set is not following normal distribution because of the heterogeneous population or because of small sample size or presence of outliers anything can be there okay in that case you cannot go with a parametric test while performing uh, the testing of hypothesis in that case we have to make a non-parametric test procedures so non-parametric tests are basically based on ranks so instead of using the original data absolute values we will be using the rank of the values so we will see certain examples to have a clear cut idea about the rank order okay <clears throat> so this type of data set uh, this type of test is generally done on data set which are measured on an ordinal scale okay or which are measured on a metric scale but unfortunately they are not following normal distribution so basically before performing any statistical test we should know what is the nature of the data whether it is quantitative qualitative first thing okay to have the idea what is qualitative and quantitative data is that if the data set is such that it does not vary from observer to observer okay and it is giving you a clear idea about the magnitude as well as the direction of the data and for example if i say bmi 18 20 25 we clearly know what is the difference between 18 and 20 20 and 25 and we know the direction that we are moving from low bmi to obesity okay so if the data set is such that it is giving clear cut idea about the magnitude as well as the direction and it is not varying from observer to observer if i am using if i have measured the bmi and I have used an instrument. If you are using also the same instrument, then more or less we would be getting the same BMI. It will not vary. But if the data set is such that it is varying from observer to observer and it is not giving a clear cut idea about the magnitude or the direction of the data. For example, if I say intelligence, somebody can be very intelligent for me, the same person can be of uh, middle or average IQ for you or the same individual can be of below average IQ for someone else. So same individual is there but from observer to observer it is varying. So if the data set is such that from observer to observer it is varying and it may not give you clear cut idea about the magnitude or the direction of the data then the data is said to be of qualitative nature. Okay, another examples can be beauty, intelligence, uh, there you are not having any clear cut idea about the magnitude and direction and it is varying from observer to observer. So this is the first thing which we have to see whether the data is qualitative and quantitative. Second thing which we have to see is that on what scale it is measured. Okay, so basically there are three scales. Uh, ideally there are only two but one of the scale is developed from the within the scales so one is metric and the second one is nominal scale nominal scale is generally used for qualitative data okay qualitative data it does not give you any idea about the magnitude or direction of the data but it is it just segregate the data into different categories for example if i say blood group distribution oab B positive, O positive, like that. So it is not that the O positive individuals have a different characteristics compared to a B positive individual. But for the sake of uh, management of the health system, we are we have divided into different categories. Another example can be player jersey number. Tandulkar is having jersey number ten, 
Dhoni is having jersey number seven. Someone is having jersey number one. Someone is having jersey number two. But it is not an uh, indicative of the playing capability of any player. It is just for the sake of convenience to identify the player. A number has been allocated. Okay, so when the data set is such that, for the sake of management, it is just dividing the individuals into different groups. Then the data set is said to be measured on a nominal scale. Sometimes what happened is that the data is purely metric in nature. For example, uh, we have blood pressure. Uh, you can precisely measure the systolic and diastolic blood pressure, but for the proper health management of the system, what we have done that is that if the level is 120 by 80, we say it normal. If it is below, we will be seeing low BM, uh, low blood pressure. If above, then we will be seeing hypertension, hypertension class one, class two, like that. Okay. So here, what we are doing is that we are categorizing the data into different groups. So while categorizing the data into certain groups, what happens sometimes? one may not have the complete idea about the magnitude difference, but will certainly have the idea about the direction. For example, the patients are categorized into categories, uh, disease severity, mild, moderate and severe. So we know that, that by saying mild, moderate and severe, the condition of the patient is getting deteriorated as we move across the group. But what is the difference between mild and moderate is not clear cut. It might vary from physician to physician. Okay. So in the blood group, uh, blood pressure classification also, someone might use a WHO classification, some might use a European classification, and some might use a Asian classification. Okay. And so one may not have a definite idea about the magnitude. So here in non-parameter test, one of the assumption is that the data set should be ordinal data. Okay, that means you should have a clear cut idea about the direction, may not have a clear cut idea about the magnitude. Okay, <clears throat> so basically non-parametric test, there are a lot of tests, but we will be covering three important tests. One is your uh, test for the paired data. It is uh, for the, in the parametric form, we have paired t test against it. And the second one is Wilcoxon Ransom test. Uh, it is also called man Whitney U-test and we have independent two sample T-test in parametric form. And the third one is your kruskal wallis test. When the number of groups are more than two, we are using a kruskal wallis test. The analogous to kruskal wallis we have uh, ANOVA analysis of variance ANOVA test, one way ANOVA in your mm. parametric form. Okay. So basically they would be using, we would be using them in performing the testing of hypothesis. Okay. Now, coming on that these three different tests, I will be coming on them one by one. But first I would like to have a little emphasis on the word testing of hypothesis. Okay. So you might have gone through it while performing the while going through the lectures of parametric test so uh, from a layman perspective if i say testing of hypothesis is basically made up of two words testing and second one is hypothesis okay so testing means that we are uh, doing uh, performing some type of uh, procedures to find out which one is better so hypothesis is uh, the second word which is of our interest. So what is hypothesis? Hypothesis is basically an, is an assertive statement about any random phenomena. Okay, so you are you cannot make a hypothesis about uh, event which is certain in nature. Yeah, for example, if you say what is the probability that the sun will rise from east. It is not a random event. Okay. From a previous large amount of data set, we know that it is rising from east. It is not a random event. But if I say what is the probability that India will uh, won this uh, match, a cricket match against Australia, which we are having. 
so it is a random event both the teams are equally good we cannot say what would be the outcome so this is the first condition okay the event should be random okay so in testing of hypothesis what we are doing is that we are making a statement assertive statement about a random phenomena okay that assertive statement can be of two types one is it can be of null nature and second be it can be of alternative nature so null hypothesis can be there or alternative hypothesis can be there so null hypothesis if i say what it is as the name says eh, assertive statement which conveys no difference meaning okay suppose you want to perform a test and you want to find out whether the average male iq is more than that of average iq of females so the it's a, a random phenomena we don't know based on our sample it might vary some in some samples males will be males might have a higher iq whereas in the other samples the females might have a higher iq so we are not sure ki who who is having a uh, upper hand in this in this case so what would be the null hypothesis that the average iq of the male is same as that of the female so null hypothesis is basically what it is a assertive statement which conveys no difference meaning and alternative it is an statement which conveys a difference of opinion males are having higher iq compared to females so males are having higher iq that means i am taking one position higher side only males are having less iq compared to females so i am taking a another position one is on the higher side that is right side and one is on the lower side that is uh, left side so in this case the situation is of one tail either higher or either lower and if i frame an alternative hypothesis that's male iq is different from female in that case this case it is called a two tail hypothesis because we have not fixed the direction male iq can be more or it can be less so it's an example of a two tail hypothesis okay now when you have a data set and if such a uh, uh, pair data and suppose that data is not following the normal distribution okay then we are using we have to use a uh, another form non parametric form of uh, pair t test okay so in that case we would be using the sign test which we are dealing so this is an example in this example uh, children's in uh, orthodontia departments were asked to rate how the, they felt about their teeth uh, treatment on a five point scale so survey administrator before and after treatment so before going through the treatment the uh, the children's were asked to rate them on a five point scale where one is wish i could change them second option score means two do not like but can put with them third is no particular feeling fourth i am satisfied with them and fifth is consider myself fortunate in this area okay now for each children a pre score is taken and after performing the treatment a post score is obtained so these data are, are ordinal they have a definite order but averages may not have a clear interpretation because it is based on the ranks okay two observations we are having before and after treatment for each child so we are using a uh, sign test which is analogous to the parametric test paired t test <clears throat> the paired sign test can be uh, applied for paired data only so <clears throat> it's a very simple and easy to interpret test makes no assumption about the distribution of the data and one of the disadvantage of the sign test is that it is not very powerful as compared to that of t test so it is not powerful not very powerful means that uh, you cannot generalize your finding okay but you cannot generalize your finding but it, there might be certain situations where you the test is very costly okay so it might not be possible for you 
to have lot of sample size so in that case sign test can be a good alternative compared to your paired t test so in this example we are basically in t test you must be knowing that we are making inference about the mean okay but here since we are dealing with the rank order so our uh, tool test is median difference it's not mean difference okay so h not is the median difference is zero the median value pre and median value post operation both are same also they are different to evaluate h not we only need to know the signs of the differences if half the difference are positive and half are negative then the median is equal to 0 in that case h not is true if the signs are more unbalanced then what is that is the evidence against the your h not and in that case we can move go with the h alternative test so this is the data set we have the data set on 20 20 children were asked to rate before and after going the treatment so before going he has given a rating of 1 that is one is very poor i don't like them if you go with the test one wish i could change them and five is consider myself fortunate in this area so this first child for this the treatment is uh, is looking very promising so he want to change his tooth and after this after the treatment he feels it is they, he is fortunate like that for each and every study sample we have before and after rating so we would be using the sign test to evaluate whether these data provide evidence that the treatment uh, here um, does improve the situation of ch ch children's uh, images for their teeth or not so first for each child compute the difference between the two ratings so we have computed the difference uh, post test after rating minus before rating so if we are getting a positive signs it means that treatment has a impact if we are getting a negative rating rating it means that the treatment is not working at all and uh, whether rather it is making the situation worse and if we have zero it means that no difference before and after we are having the same Uh, impact okay Sir, you are not audible, sir. Sir, you are not audible, sir. Am I audible to you, sir?
uh, our respected uh, speaker is uh, uh, not connected due to some technical issue. He will uh, rejoining uh, soon. Uh, we are just waiting for two to three minutes. He is trying to connect uh, again with us. Sorry for the inconvenience. I'm trying to resolve all issues uh, very soon. Amit, I am audible now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Audible now. Sorry for the inter interruption. Okay. No problem, sir. No problem, sir. Please. For how long I was not, not audible? I was. I got a message that I am not audible. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you just change that uh, slide and. Uh... Yes, please tell me. Have we covered? Scientist. Slide are loading still. Acha, they are loading. Yes. This one is done, sir. This one is done? Yes, yes. From this one, null hypothesis, alternative hypothesis. I think there is a one table you are describing that table yeah, this one. and uh... okay. okay, message from someone. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'm really sorry for the interruption. Okay, so <clears throat> so you are having the data on twenty childrens. Okay, and uh, they are asked to rate their uh, teeth image before treatment and after treatment. Okay, so we are getting uh, these information before and after rating. Okay, so we are performing a uh, sign test for this thing. So what the first thing is you, you have to do is that you have to take before and after difference. So that means basically after treatment, what score you have got and before giving the treatment, what score it was. So we have got these values. So in performing the sign test, we look at the signs of the differences. So here we have 15 signs. So ideally, 
if the treatment would have uh, if the treatment would, will not have any impact so ideally we could have out of 20 10 signs of positive and 10 signs of negative would have been there and we could have got a median value close to zero okay but here we are getting that out of 20 15 children are there who felt better so it uh, and there is one child which feel worse after treatment and there are four childs who says that there is no difference before and after okay so from this uh, numbers we feel that the data side data or the treatment might have uh, might have an impact so we need to check the p value okay so uh, the next question comes to our mind is what is p value okay so p value is what from a layman perspective if i say it's nothing but p value means probability value with respect to null hypothesis okay so with respect to null hypothesis is what probability we are getting so if the null is saying that uh, before and after treatment do not have any impact and if you get a probability a very high probability of this thing how much high and how much low you have fixed the value that five percent you have fixed the alpha five percent so if you are getting a matching more than five percent then you will say that okay, there is no difference in the treatment data is going well with the null hypothesis but if the data is not going good with the null hypothesis what you will get you will get a low p value okay so low p value so how much low any value less than five percent you have you can fix that level of significance according to your aim and objective generally we do not encourage to have a p value more than five percent at our type one error more than five percent <clears throat> so the p value is the probability of an outcome as or more extreme under h naught than that observed we observed that 15 positives are there and one negative is there so if h naught were true we did expect an equal number of positive and negative difference more extreme out outcomes would be more than 15 positive or less than one positive so in this case the p value would be the extreme values so extreme values is how greater than 15 whatever you are getting is extreme values and less than or equal to one whatever you are getting are extreme values so that is the critical region for which we need to calculate the probabilities so more than 15 how much you are having and less than one how much you are having so for while performing a sign test we are using a, a test statistics which is based on binomial distribution okay so using that binomial table we are calculating the probability x greater than or equal to 15 okay you know that there are 20 samples in our data set here we have 20 samples and four samples are there who are having no difference okay so zero we need we are excluding zero from our data set okay so four uh, data we will not consider because they are conveying a no difference meaning so 16 would be the sample size so greater than 15 how many how many we were having we would be having x equal to 15 plus x equal to 16 and less than or equal to 1 so less than and equal to 1 could be probability of x equal to 1 and probability of x equal to 0 and using the binomial distribution test which is uh, given by the formula ncx p to the power x q to the power en minus x we are calculating these probabilities so in short what is happening is that design test using the actual data set we are we are finding the uh, rank of the data then what we are doing we are calculating how many positives and how many negatives you are getting and then for the extreme cases we are calculating the p-value using the binomial test okay now for this using the binomial test we are getting a p-value of 0.004 that is we are getting uh the p-value is what as i have told it is probability how the data goes well with the null hypothesis so you can see here the data is not going well with the null hypothesis only 0 0.0 0.04 percent 
matching is there so data is suggesting that the treatment has a very good impact and even our our data has suggested that 15 people are there who feel that their condition has improved so the treatment has a significant impact over here now coming on the second test which we are calling it as wilcox sign rent wilcoxon sign rent test is another type of a non parametric test which is analogous to paired uh, sorry which is analogous to your independent t test okay so uh, this is more powerful than the sign test uh, uh, wilcoxon this sorry we, uh, this is not u test it's wilcoxon sign rent test so this is also a type of a test which is used for paired data only but it, this is more powerful compared to the sign test in the sign test if you have you, we have seen that only the sign of the data is considered considered but in wilcoxon sign rent test the sign as well as the magnitude of the difference is also considered so it is more powerful than the sign test and it's little bit more difficult to interpret than the sign test so same data we are having of the children 20 children are there now instead of using the sign test we are using wilcoxon signed rent tax, uh, test okay so before treatment first child has given a rate one after treatment the child has given a rating of five and we are we have got these differences so in when we are using a wilcoxon rent test we eliminate the zero difference the same thing we do it in the sign rent test also okay so first step is that is to calculate the difference post and pre observation then if there are uh, zero then we have to remove that zeros from our data set so 16 observations now we are having now we note the signs of the differences how many positives are there and along with that we get the magnitude what is the magnitude so in the sign rent test we were not getting the magnitude here um, before we were having the value 1 and after we were having the value 5 so post minus pre the difference is 4 the sign is positive and we have the sign as well as the magnitude in this scale sign and magnitude second also sign and magnitude here the sign is negative and the magnitude difference which is changing is 2 okay so here we are considering sign as well as the magnitude difference then we what we are doing is that we are reordering the data by the magnitude in ascending order we arrange our data from lower magnitude difference to higher magnitude difference so and accordingly you can see that the child number has been changed okay fourth one is having the least magnitude difference like that and then we are assigning the rank okay the least difference is given rank 1 and then we have the subsequent rank here you can see that there are uh, many observations who are having tied observations same rank okay second observation is two this is also two difference this is also two difference and this is also two difference and in this case we have to they, they are tied observation so for tied observation we have to give a, a rank how we are giving a rank we are giving a rank by taking the averages so this one is second two this is third two plus three plus four plus five so we are getting 14 14 divided by number of observations which is here four so 14 divided by four that is seven by two that is 3.5 so for each rank we are giving them a common rank second one 3.5 third one also 3.5 3.5 3.5 similarly for the rest of the rank observations we have we are assigning a common rank and like that we have categorized all the data set into the rank values for the same thing i have written <clears throat> The statistics for the sign rank test is the sum of the ranks of the positive difference. So we would be calculating the positive ranks R1, which we, in this case we are getting for all the positive ranks. Negative one we will leave. So here one, 
here 3.5 3.5 like that so we are having the positive rank we are calculating the positive rank which is 132.5 in this case r1 so what does r1 suggest so with 16 observation r1 could range from 0 all differences are negative to 136 all differences are positive so if h0 were true we would expect r1 to be near the middle of the range in this case 136 half that is 68 but we are getting an r1 value which is 132.5 uh, which is closer to the extreme this 136 extreme so this appears to be the evidence against h0 so we need to have a p value for that so in this case in sign test rank test we have used the binomial approximation whereas in the signed rank test p value we would for p value calculation we would be using the normal approximation so for normal approximation we are calculating this formula n into n plus 1 divided by 4 n in our case is 16 observations are there and using this where, where here ti are the number of ties in each groups of ties uh, note that if we are getting ti equal to 1 then the term this 1 cube is 1 only it will become 0 and n is the number of non-zero differences the two-sided p-value is calculated using this formula 2 into probability of n with mean 0 and variance 1 this should be greater than or equal to r1 minus mu minus 0 0.5 by sigma so we need to calculate this mu and sigma from the data mu and sigma from the data can be calculated using this formula okay so we have used this formula mu n is equal to 16 16 into 16 plus 1 by 4 so we are getting the mean as 68 whereas for the uh, second formula that sigma square we need to have the value of t ti tide observations so how many tide observations we are getting so there are four people tied with difference 2 8 with difference 3 and three tide observation with difference 4 so in the data set you can look we have 1 2 3 4 observations with 1 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 observations with the tide second and here we are having 1, 2 and 3 observations. So here from here only it has written the values. So number of observation there are 4 people tied with difference 2, 8 with difference 3 and 3 tied with difference 4. So using this formula only so 4. 4 cube minus 4, 4 observations, 8 cube minus 8 observations, 3 cube minus 3 observations. So we are getting this value as 588. Putting this value in the formula of dispersion sigma square, we are getting the variance as 386.25. Now, for calculation of the p value, we are using this formula. Previous one, this one. This 2 into p n01 should be greater than or equal to r1 minus mu 0 0.5 by sigma so we are applying this formula and we are getting a p value which is equal to 0 0.002 so here also this wilcoxon sign rent test also suggests that the treatment has an impact but if you look at the p values here the p value is 0 0.002 same data set when we have done it using the sign test you look at this p value this p value is 0 0.0004 so some amount of nuisance yeah uh, over estimation of the p value was there which is taken care by the wilcoxon sign rent test so this test is considered to be more powerful compared to your sign test although it is little bit uh, mm, difficult to calculate than that the sign rent test but nowadays we would be we are using software to calculate the uh, p values the important thing is that we should know the meaning of sign test so sign test is what based on the signs of the ranks we are performing a sign test whereas in 
uh, Wilcoxon signed on test, we are considering sign as well as we are considering the magnitude of difference. And then we are calculating how the data goes well with the null hypothesis using the normal approximation test. Okay. <clears throat> now we have another example, another test, which we are calling it as Wilcoxon rank sum test, or it is also called man Whitney U test. This test is analogous to your independent T test, like the fine run test and some uh, uh, Wilcoxon rank sum test. This test is also based on the ranks of the data. So here is an example of shear strength, which to compare two methods for preparing ceramics in terms of product strength. Two methods of preparation, one is the press method and the second one is the layer method. And we have uh, 10 observations in each set. Okay, so you can see that this is the press method, red one, and this blue one is your layer method. You can see in the press method there, there is one outlier. Uh, lying, these two are little bit outlier, they are lying far from the rest of the values, whereas the blue one is more or less homogeneous. So, uh, because of this outlier, the data set might not follow the normal distribution. So, in that case, t test might not be appropriate. Okay, so in that case, uh, it may not follow the normal distribution. So, we, we will be using a non parametric test that is Wilcoxon rank sum test. So what we are doing is that first we are assigning ranks to the combined samples. Okay. Sum the ranks in one of the groups, which group does not matter. Okay. So we would be allocating the ranks. Minimum strength is giving the highest rank in ascending order. We are doing it. Okay. And then we are finding out the uh, sum of the ranks R1. And we are for the groups. So this one is R1 is for press group. And R2 similarly we would be having for the uh, layer group. Interpretation of the rank sum test. Like the sign rank test, the rank sum does not have an obvious interpretation. It will depend on the number of observation in the entire sample and in the chosen group. In this case, we have 20 observations. 10 in each groups. R1 could range from 55 to 155. If the groups are equal, we would expect R1 to be in the middle around 105. But uh, we are getting a value of, uh, we are getting R1 equal to 77. It seems rather low compared to the average, uh, compared to the uh, middle value. So the null hypothesis is that the two distributions are equal, equal, equivalent that is for R1 and R2. The distribution of R1 under H0 is all possible ranks that would occur when 10 ranks are randomly chosen from a sample of 20. So we could have the mean rank equal to 105. The p value is the percentage of possible combination that results as an extreme cases here R1 we are getting it as 77 two sided test we are doing we don't know whether the condition is improving or deteriorating so the exact p value based on that test is we are getting it in this case for the right tail we are getting it as 0 0.178 and for the left tail also we are getting it as 0 0.078 so the cumulatively the p value which we are getting it as 0.03 so you can see that this p value is less than 0 0.05 it is giving you an indication that the two groups are different are independent they are statistically significantly different exact p value is uh, normal approximation to exact p value is difficult to compute manually so generally we rely on softwares to calculate the uh, 
exact p value based on the normal approximation of the data set okay so what we are doing in this any testing of hypothesis the very first step which we are doing is that we are framing the null and alternative hypothesis second is that we are framing the level of significance alpha we decide on that thing third we choose the uh, test statistics if it is following the assumptions of parametric test we are going with the parametric test if it is not following the assumptions of parametric test then we have non parametric test parametric test are based on absolute values whereas non parametric test are based on the rank values median values okay for independent t test we have wilcoxon rank sum test for paired t test we have sign test and uh, wilcoxon sign rank sum test okay now when the number of groups these tests are basically for two samples only but what happened if the number of groups are more than two if the number of groups are more than two in parametric test we are using anova one way anova so identical to one way anova we have a non parametric test which we are calling it as a kruskal wallis one way anova so it is also using the ranks so a non parametric equivalent test to one way anova is used for making comparison of more than two groups the groups are independent this is an assumption the group should be independent the population from which the samples are selected are not normally distributed if they are normally distributed we can go with the anova and the samples do not have equal variances this assumption is violated this is the homogeneity of variance assumption is violated can also be used when ordered outcome exist or your data set is measured on a ordinal scale rather than your metric scale ratio scale or interval scale is necessary to perform a anova but if you have a rank orders then we can have kruskal wallis test so kruskal wallis test test statistics is using is using this formula 12 divided by n plus 1 r j square by n j minus 3 n plus 1 divided by n into n plus 1 cumulatively it is written like there where k is the number of groups to be compared uh, ideally it should be more than 2 n j the number of observation in the jth group n the number of observation in all the groups combined and r j is the sum of ranks in the jth group this is an example where we have three data sets a b and c and for these data set it is not mandatory that we should have equal samples in all the three groups okay so we are finding out the ranks for the first data set first group r1 then we are finding the ranks for the second group r2 and for the third group so what we are doing is that we are arranging this data set in ascending order and based on the categories we are assigning the ranks so for a what rank we are getting 22 for b we are getting the rank uh, 37 and for c we are getting a rank of 46 now using this formula 12 n divided by n plus 1 number of observation here it is 14 you can see 2 to 4 5 5 5 10 10 plus 4 14 so we have 12 divided by n into n plus 1 so 12 divided by 14 into 14 plus 1 Uh, summation of rj square by nj minus 3 n minus 1 so we can have this formula rj is j varies from 1 to 3 here so for the first sample it is 22 so 22 square by 5 for the second sample it is 37 37 square divided by 5 plus 46 whole square divided by 4 minus 3 into n plus 1 that is 15 we are getting h value as 6.4 okay now we would be comparing it with the h table on h table we have the kruskal wallis h table okay it's just like chi square table we have the or t table we have kruskal wallis h table so for at kruskal kruskal wallis h table at alpha 5% at the at the degree of freedom which is n minus 1 that is 13 in case we would be finding the h tabulated value okay and h calculated value so if this case h tabulated value is coming out to be more than h calculated value which is 6.4 here 
then it is an indication that the null hypothesis would be rejected otherwise your null hypothesis will not be rejected okay so in conclusion what we are having is that these are non parametric methods that correspond to parametric methods such as the t test independent t test pair t test and the correlation coefficient test the primary advantage of these method is that they do not involve restrictive assumptions such as normality and homogeneity of variance their major disadvantage is that they are less efficient than the corresponding parametric test uh, uh, the five methods which we have discussed are wilcoxon sindrang test kruskal wallis test man whitney u test the sin test and the spearman rank order correlation which we have discussed yesterday and fisher's exact test that also we have discussed just yesterday these are the non parametric methods that are mostly used in performing uh, dealing with uncertainties while uh, dealing in our health sciences okay so this is our non parametric test so basically we have five test we have discussed four more some uh, parametric test also pearson correlation test was there phi test was, was there kendall stau the correlation test yesterday these are the tests basically meant for uh, checking the median difference okay thank you everyone now if anyone is having any query can ask me thank you sir for very amazing session uh, now i would uh, like to request to all participants if there is any query regarding today's session then please write in the chat box or simply raise your hand so i can send you the unmute request <laughs> It's again, at the same thing, uh, last lecture day, we're receiving lots of uh, messages that uh, lesson was a very nice, uh, nice lesson. Uh, thank you, Dr. Prashant. I hope I all queries was answered. If uh, still there is any query, then please write in the chat box or simply raise your hand. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Vashali. Okay, one thing I would request to the participants is that uh, I know that it is uh, a difficult uh, topic for a non statistician. Yeah. And uh, to cover entire non parametric and parametric in a single session, uh, for me it is uh, it is little easy compared to people. But uh, I would request you that go through the presentations and uh, follow any standard book in the same time so that you can have an overlook or you can have a better idea of the presentation what's going on and then we can have uh, in case of individual differences or uh, individual carries we can have one to one discussion also okay so thank you everyone thank you, thank you very much sir i hope that uh, participant if there is any query then you can uh, simply mail us as uh, already provided a mail id now without taking too much time i would like to introduce today's chairperson of the session our respected Dr. Supriya Bhale Rao ma'am. Ma'am is currently working as a scientist and head the Metabolic Research Lab, Interactive Research School of Health Affairs at Bharti Vidya University, Pune, uh, from July 2013 till there. Ma'am has done her MDM uh, and PhD in Ayurveda and the PG Diploma in Clinical Research in, and also in uh, Bioethics. Ma'am has done even formal sponsored and family naked projects as principal investigator. And uh, Ma'am has uh, already done the many achievements and a member of pre SST of ICMR and IDF, Bella Gavi, member of expert committee of products at Google, FSSI, government of health and family welfare, and a member of data safety monitoring board, uh, monitoring of clinical trials and population based. Uh, uh, prophylactic studies of IOS interventions related to COVID-19. Uh, Ma'am is associated editor of Journal of Arveda and Integrative Medicine, invited for more than 350 lectures on research methodology. 
aesthetics, ethics, scientific writings, and pharmacovigilance. As a resource person in guest lectures, workshops, seminars, and conferences across the country, I must have this 50 plus in uh, publications in national and international journals. Now, I would uh, like to request ma'am, please uh, share some news with all participants and kindly conclude today's session. Please, ma'am, welcome, ma'am. Yes. Uh, hello, am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Audible, ma'am. Yeah. So, first of all, thank you, Amit ji, for inviting me for this session. And uh, I could see the response you are getting for all these sessions. There were very uh, many, many comments, like it was a nice session and wonderful session. And I must congratulate you for uh, taking this initiative uh, for the capacity building in statistics. And I congratulate the participants also who have joined for the course and uh, they are eager to learn statistics. And I always feel that uh, statistics is one area or one subject where uh, Ayurveda faculty lacks considerably. If you see the publications uh, which are published by the Ayurveda fraternity, most of them uh, use P, uh, t, t test as the only test as if there is only one test uh, exists on the earth and that is the only test maximum people use but i'm sure that after listening to this session there will be i mean this session and the whole course the program where they have registered there must be a, a lot of awareness about which test to be applied where and uh, how we were going wrong previously and how we should go about the parameters and which test to be applied where so I am very sure that uh, this is not only capacity building in statistics, but overall the research uh, training in Ayurveda will also enhance and uh, good publications will come out from the researches which are being done in Ayurveda colleges. Regarding today's presentation, I joined a bit late because I was confused about the timing. Uh, nevertheless, I heard uh, actually the major part of the uh, lecture, like I joined from the scientist and um, I must say that it was the uh, best way and easiest way how one can learn statistics and uh, congratulations Dr. Ashish for uh, giving a wonderful presentation. Uh, though I teach statistics and uh, you must have heard in the bio data of mine which uh, Amitji read that uh, I gave lectures on statistics but I always tell that uh, we are not going to go into the details of the statistical part of it, uh, the mathematical part of it because we are not going to become statisticians. We want to learn statistics only that much which will be useful for our uh, research work. But after listening to today's presentation, I think that um, uh, Dr. Ashish has covered the detailed part of it also, like why scientists and how the scientist works actually, how the p-value comes. So uh, these things are also important and um, this, uh, this definitely add a different dimension in the understanding of the test because just knowing that which test to be applied where rather than that how the test works that is also important and Dr. Ashish uh, presented it in a very simplified way and very nice way. The examples were also very explanatory and uh, very interesting. So I would like to uh, ask you Amitji that uh, when is your next course going to start uh, so that uh, I can uh, motivate more people to join for this course and uh, enroll for this course so that uh, more people can get benefited from the course. Uh, I think this is all from my side for today. And uh, uh, I hope that the participants who have registered for this course and who, have, who are listening to these lectures will implement this statistical test in their further researches because that is the actual success of any course. Just listening and then forgetting is not the thing but when we repeatedly use this test in our uh, research work then that will be a real success so thank you very much once again for inviting me and uh, making me part of this program thank you so much thank you very much ma'am for your kind words and uh, uh, guidance for our participants that uh, how we can implement the statistical method to uh, their research and uh, thank you for uh, uh, presence as a chairperson in the session. Uh, am I audible, sir? Right now? Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, sir. Uh, for uh, next session, as ma'am requested, that uh, we are recently going to start a new uh, certificate program for uh, nursing paramedical students and uh, homeopathic uh, students, uh, maybe scheduled in April. Uh, this is a third three month certificate program again. And uh, 
And we are uh, launching some uh, short courses uh, based on the feedback you provide after this uh, program. After 31st March, we send a link of feedback form uh, that uh, where we lack. Uh, you have to provide the topics name that uh, where we lack, uh, we need to improve more. So we uh, combine these topics only and uh, then uh, we schedule a customized program for all uh, Ayurveda and uh, allopath profession combinedly. Uh, so please wait for that. Now, uh, on the behalf of Institute of Applied Statics and National Institute of Ayurveda Jaipur, we convey our sincere thanks to all the participants for their active participants, participation and commitment for today's session. We have to thanks to the guest speaker of the session, Dr. Ashish Kumar Yadav, sir, who kept the participants engaged by the very informative and knowledgeable session. We also thanks uh, our respected Dr. Supriya Bhale Rao, ma'am, for chairing today's session and sharing her experience and views about the session with the participants and motivating them. Now, this is the end of today's session. Uh, tomorrow, we have uh, one session on basic concepts of regression that will be delivered by uh, Dr. Anil C. Matthew, sir. So, uh, the time for tomorrow will be 6 p.m. So, join uh, uh, around 5.50 uh, to avoid any technical deficiency, technical issues. And this is the end of today's session. We again thanks to our respected chairperson of the session and uh, respected resource person of the session. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Amit. Thank you, ma'am. Supriya, ma'am. Thank you. This is the end of today's session. Again, thanks to all the participants.